Hello and welcome uh, once again to the India Today Conclave. Few, if any, constitutional posts at the moment in the country carry the weight of public expectations and the microscope of public scrutiny as much as that of the Chief Justice of India and, dare one say, the Supreme Court itself. Not a day passes when the Apex Court doesn't make the headlines in some form or the other. So how do those who have worn what some might argue is now a crown of thorns see the role of the Supreme Court and the Chief Justice of India in particular? Today we'll be listening to three Chief Justices of India, uh, two former recent Chief Justices and the current Chief Justice in the course of this day. Please therefore welcome our first guest, Justice S.A. Bobde, Chief Justice of India from November 2019 to April 2021. Justice Bobde, welcome uh, to the India Today Conclave. Uh, am I right in suggesting that the Chief Justice's post today is a crown of thorns, constantly under scrutiny and therefore seemingly under immense pressure as well? Well, the thorns, if any, uh poked by the media. I uh, see. It, it, is, uh, it is a difficult uh, place to be in, the Chief Justice of India. But, uh, and it is a heavy responsibility. There are, there's too much competition for uh, the, the court's years. And uh, obviously everybody wants to win his case. But uh, I'm saying this frankly, without any disrespect, the problems uh, really arise from the somewhat irresponsible comments uh, judges have to face. And, uh, and the Chief Justice is always answerable. Anything that happens in the court is the Chief Justice who is responsible. Now, you seem to be almost suggesting that Bechara Chief Justice. No, not at that, all. You know, look I'm at not, I was just telling you, I was just carrying forward your analogy of thorns. Yes. I said the post itself, it, there are no thorns on the post. Uh, those thorns are what you get from uh, the onlookers. Okay. Uh, the onlookers will probably turn around and say that the fact is many judgments in this country at the moment are tangled in political wars. You were, for example, part of the Ayodhya judgment. And the nature of the case, the kind of politics that had swirled around Ayodhya for decades meant inevitably, whatever judgment you delivered, there was going to be some kind of a political fallout to it. That's so in every case. But is that part of the problem? That because the, the Supreme Court today increasingly finds itself tangled in taking up these political cases, whether it is Rafael, yeah. whether it is... Uh, uh, the Ayodhya judgment, because these cases come eventually to the Supreme Court, the court almost inevitably and the Chief Justice inevitably finds himself caught in a political battle. Well, uh, I would like to say that the word label political can be attached to anything. I see nothing political about the Ayodhya case. The case what we heard. There is probably nothing political about Rafael. It was a defense deal. Mm -hmm. Ayodhya was an issue about whether Lord Ram, in, amongst other things, Lord Ram was born in that place, etc., etc., etc. So I don't see, and the case has been going on since, the problem has been going on since pre-independence times. What is political about it, except that politicians talk about it? Or, or some might want to derive political mileage from a controversy. We are not involved in politics as, as courts. We decide a case that comes up before us, brought to us by parties who have something to say and uh, who have a claim, and we uh, adjudicate that claim. What is politics in it? So you didn't feel extra pressure while you all were hearing and eventually delivering the judgment in a case like Ayodhya? 
No. Uh, possibly a greater sense of, uh, possibly some sense of anxiety on what it might, uh, what effect it might have on the body politics to some extent, but not the political kind. 